I should probably change my t-shirt. Because I'll be invisible. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that could save you a little bit of money and just make life a little bit easier for you. And it's water conditioners. So, when I first get into the hobby, one of the things that you get told everywhere, and it's quite right, you have to make sure you treat your water before you put any fish in your aquarium. And if you're doing a water change, you need to treat your water to dechlorinate it, if nothing else. So is it safe for the fish to swim in? And that is true, you have to make sure that there's no chlorine, but there's more than one way to do it, and you don't have to buy expensive bottles of Prime or any of the other tap safe, or whatever it might be, which do stack up over the years. And I do it slightly differently, and I'm not alone, and I didn't invent this or anything along those lines. But I use this thing here. This is called uh, an HMA filter, which stands for Heavy Metal Axe. And that's because it cuts out any heavy metals in your water source. In your water source. And you might know them as carbon block filters and things like that, but that's just the, the name that we use here. This particular one is a three-stage filter. So you've got one stage here which is your sediment filter and then two different types of carbon block filters or carbon granule filters. They all remove chlorine, many of them remove chloramines um, which is a version of chlorine that doesn't just gas off if you just leave the water standing and again depending on the specific type that you buy you might get ones that remove copper, lead, whatever it might be that could be in your um, water supply. An old house for instance that might have lead pipes still you don't really want to be putting that in your fish tank. So this is what I class as the, the easy and cheap way to make sure that my water's safe before I put it in the aquarium. If it was just chlorine that was in my water, then I could just wait and let it gas off. So I could run it into some kind of storage container, leave it there for 24 hours and it would be perfectly safe to put in. And um, obviously if I wanted to do it quicker than that, then I would have to use a dechlorinator such as Seachem Prime or Safe or API tap safe or any of the other ones but this is the method I've used and that means I can set up my entire fish room to drip water into all the tanks doing a continuous water change and I don't have to worry about dechlorinating the water and these things are good for again dependent on the precise exact model that you buy um, hundreds of thousands of litres of water can pass through here before we need to change them but just to talk about these a little bit more, as well as being able to save money, because that's something like this could cost you anything from 30 quid up to 100 quid for all different types of uh, filters. This particular one is what's known as a 10 inch uh, filter. You get ones that are two, two stage, some are three stage, you get 20 inch ones. The size generally um, deals with how much water you can pass through before needing to change the barrels, or change the cartridges, sorry and how high of a flow rate you can put through there. So you, if you want to put in a bigger flow rate or a higher flow rate, you need the bigger cartridges. As I'm just dripping in here, I'm going way under the limit, which I think for this one is about four liters per minute. And um, so it, it's plenty big enough for my needs here. I've got this one here and I've got the one uh, upstairs, which I use on my display tank for its big water changes. Now, it might look familiar here, any of those of you who are into your know, marine keeping or plants or shrimp or anything that's very delicate, you might look at RODI water, um, which is reverse osmosis and deionized de water. This is effectively the first part of an RODI filter. So you would go through these chambers and then through further filters to produce your RODI water. But with this, there's absolutely zero waste um, everything that goes through here can go into your tank uh, whereas an RO filter there's a lot of waste before you get your RO water and it doesn't actually alter your water parameters in terms of nitrates or phosphates or things like that so if you um, it doesn't um, soften the water or anything like that it's, you can just put it straight in your tank and you know what you've got because it's not changing it it's just removing the toxic stuff from it so that in its basis is something that if I can get 200,000 litres of water through this, um, that's a hell of a lot cheaper than it is buying all the dechlorinator over and over again, and I don't need to actually add it into each tank when I'm doing it. Um, I know some things like Seachem Safe and Seachem Prime have actually got really good uh, rates of usage. A very small amount goes a long way with them, but you'll find that practically uh, no one actually ever does that because they always overuse because it's very hard to measure those tiny small amounts. 
and again, depending how many water changes you actually do, this might not be appropriate. If you only ever do one water change every couple of months and it's only a very small water change, this might be overkill. If you have very large tanks or a large number of tanks, this might be perfect. So, with all that said, um, I'll leave you some links uh, below to a site called Devotedly Discus where I think gives the best overview of what HMA filters do and how they can work and how they use them. Um, I'll leave a link up here or a link up here to a video I did a while back with a guy called Mark Evenden who knows a lot about them, kind of brought them into the market and started using them first many years ago um, and you can find a lot more information than I can ever tell you there but I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention that there are other ways and you can save yourself a good few pennies over the years if you use something like this. So now I shall go on with changing this. Um, I've worked out that the, the type of cartridges that I use and the condition of my water in general, I need to change these about every six months and I have them a small supply of the replacement cartridges. So I'm going to go ahead and change one of these, or all of these now, um, and make sure that the water's tip top. First thing I need to do um, is just basically turn the water off. So I've got my hot water here. Make sure it's all off. Now, as you can see, I've got mine mounted on the wall and it's being fed by this uh, general water pipe. You can get ones that have all manner of different fittings. It can fit to a garden hose, it can fit to a tap even. Um, people use these in their house just for their drinking water and when I get to actually taking this off, which is the first stage uh, sediment filter, you'll see why you might even want to use this even if you think the chlorinator works out cheaper for you because Oh, it's proper disgusting, but let's have a look at them anyway. You have a special spanner and it just hits into this. Go in the right direction. Simply unscrews. And this is the internal, uh, the first stage rather, of the sediment filter. Now these are, I think these are one micron, these might be five micron filters actually. So there's the old one. And that's a new one. So you can see why it might be a good idea not to just add some extra chemicals to clean your water actually take some of the gunk out that's six months worth from being pristine brand new filter so that just gets chucked you pop the new one in and you screw it back on again now I could probably get away with just changing that one filter every six months and these two annually but I might as well just change them all while we're here What we're going to replace these two with is basically carbon granules. So this one's activated carbon um, and this was a carbon block. These are the granules, solid. They effectively do the same thing, they just do it different ways. And one of the other handy tips is the more often you change this, the longer these can live. So if you change this every three months for it, if your water was even dirtier than mine, I would change this more often, then you can get away with changing these ones less often. I'm actually also using fairly cheap uh, filters here because my, my water is actually pretty good. So again, old filter, new filter. Check out some of the links that I'll leave before if you want to check out what the different types of cartridges are that are available and you can get one that suits your needs best. And then the final one is the cartridges one, so there's nothing to see because it's got a plastic sheath on the outside. And these things themselves, they're just housings, these fit inside and the water goes up here and the, the fitment's fitting up here. Doesn't really matter what way around you do these two, but you always want to make sure you have your sediment filter first 
and that's in the clear um, so you can see you can see when it gets dirty it needs changing but like I say I tend to go for every six months just give them all a good tighten Oops. you also want to make sure that after changing a filter cartridge or the filter cartridge especially the carbon ones you want to run it for a good 10 20 liters just to make sure that you're not letting any of the crap that's still circulating in there get into your water supply but in effect that's it done i can just turn this back on again and like i say that gives me if i use my hot water tap which is up here which you can actually see i'll just give you a run through of this so i've got hot and cold coming in through there which go through a thermostatic mixer valve like a shower valve i've also got a cold bypass if i just need a lot of cold water quickly for whatever reason but i can set the temperature here so it comes out in my case i think i've got it set to about 26 degrees which is usually fine for any tank through here filtered at the right temperature and comes out into each tank at the right temperature perfect so in my case how i actually use that is i have the output from the hma filter that you've just seen runs a line into each tank which is drilled with an overflow to the drain and then I have these drip tips on the end which control the flow rate into the tanks so this is just constantly dripping into the tank giving me whatever rate of change I want I never actually have to do any water changes in this fish room there you go that's just a quick tip hopefully it's of some use to you might save you a little bit of money and um, if it is of any use to you let me know in the comments below give me a like if you liked it give me a dislike if you didn't like it give me a subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos in the future and thank you once again for watching see you later bye